see, that's what we do in my business. We are left brain analytical numbers people. We talk in numbers. And for the most part, the rest of the world are right brain picture people. So we talk in numbers, you're thinking in pictures. Sometimes you don't have a clue what we're talking about. So what I'm going to do for you this morning is really tell you more stories. I'm going to put into some graphic examples exactly how we got here and where we may be going. 1987, the Dow loses a trillion dollars in market cap in one day. President, out of the country. Vice President, out of the country. Secretary of the Treasury, out of the country. Alan Greenspan is at the helm, and he has been Fed Chairman for 74 days. Imagine being at the helm of a world financial meltdown, and you've been on the job for two and a half months. So what did he do? He tested his theory. His theory was during a period of market crisis, during a period of credit crisis, you add money to the banking system. So what did Greenspan do? He threw money into the banking system. And the markets liked what it saw, and it started to recover. And within months, they were almost back to pre-crash highs. So he tested his theory, and he was right. During a credit crisis, during a market crisis, you add money to the banking system. 1994, Mexican currency crisis. 1987-98, that was the Asian contagion and the Russian ruble crisis. In every instance, he added roughly 5 to 10 percent more money to the banking system than was in circulation. Now here we are at critical mass. It's August of 1998. This will be his first and only preemptive strike. He's going to throw money into the banking system before the crisis occurs. And he's going to utter those famous words, irrational exuberance for a second time. The first time he said that was December of 1996. Now he's saying it again. August of 1998, don't do it. Irrational exuberance. And what he's going to do is he's going to flood the banks with liquidity because of what he sees about to occur. So my question to you before I go any further, what does Greenspan see in August of 1998 that's going to become a potential disaster? Why does he do it? Anybody remember Y2K? An exercise in organized panic? Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember. Oh, no, wait, wait. Not that the computers were going to fail. But what is every bank and financial institution telling you to do? Everything's going to be okay, I said. Right? Except keep a December 99 statement. Keep a hard copy. Then what did they say? They said, why don't you pull two to three months of living expenses out of the bank? That way, if there's a problem, you've got some money to live on in case there's a problem. Now, let me ask you this question. Does that money exist in our banking system? No. So what did Greenspan do? He put it there. By the way, what was the savings rate in 1999? Does anybody remember? Zero. Here's my question to you. Where did all that money go? It went to the stock market. It went to, to thinly Street. It went to IPOs. What happened to the stock market? Boom. This is Y2K. This is January 14th, 2000. That's when the Dow at that time hit its all-time high, 11,722. No Y2K. What did Greenspan do? He took his money back. And what did the market do? Boom! And that's what happened. And now where are we today? Let's see, in 1999, it was March of 1999 when the Dow first crossed 10,000. Where are we today on the Dow? 10,500. In 10 years, we have gone virtually nowhere. And I'm imagining this is probably what it must feel like to be a horse in a horse race. Have y'all ever wondered what the horse is thinking? The horse has got to be thinking, we got to get somewhere fast, because the jockey's going, we have to get somewhere fast, we have to get somewhere fast. And the horse goes a mile and a quarter and ends up exactly where it started. The horse has got to be thinking, we were just here. <laughs> this is where we started. We took the longest possible route to get to where we wanted to be. 
If we'd have stayed here, we'd have been first. That's what the horse is thinking. When we grow old, we go through four stages in our life. We go through our learning, yearning, earning, and burning. Basically, you're learning, age 1 through 25. This is when you're in school, you got your first job, you're learning. You're yearning, this is when I want it, i got to have it, I want that new car, I want that flat screen TV, age 25 to 35. Your earning years, age 35 through 65, this is when you're starting to earn your, you know, your best, about age 50 is when you're at your peak earning years, and then, of course, age 65 and beyond, this is when you're drawing down. When you're now, this is very important, hold on to this thought for just a minute. The baby boomers were born from 1946 to 1964. As a matter of fact, 78 million were born, 76.9 million remain today. The next generation that followed this generation was Gen X, and they were born from 1965 to 1983. There are 45 million of them. Oh, by the way, the World War II generation, roughly 43 million of them. So you can see this bulge right here of roughly 30 million more babies, hence the baby boom generation. And then, of course, from 1984 to 2002 is Gen X. Now, a lot has been written about the baby boomers. We know this. Everybody knows they're coming. We built hospitals for them. We built elementary schools for us. We built high schools and colleges for us, right? We all know that we're coming. Today, the baby boomers are turning 65. They're retiring. The median age for the average baby boomer is roughly 53 to 54 years old. That peak of baby boomers were born in 1955 and 1956. That was the top of the bell curve. Here's my question to you. When did the baby boomers start saving for retirement? They started opening their IRAs and saving at about age 35. They really kicked it up a notch by age 50. Watch how this works. They were born in 1946. They start saving at 35. They kick it up a notch at age 50. Let's take 35. Let's add it to 1946. Add 50 to 1946. Where does it bring in 1981, 1996? one of the greatest bull markets in American history.